on the album, really my secret weapon is this cube amp, this practice amp. Really? Because um, it was uh, something that I got just, you know, obviously for because it's so damn small to just like practice with. But um, it has all these cool effects on it. And, you know, obviously, like, I, I'm into some effects. I, I have some here today that I, that I, I use live, and uh, I've also used on the recording. Um, but I found this amp so goddamn convenient because you just kind of flip, like, for their, their phaser is just so interesting and kind of basic. But because it's so basic and just the, the, the kind of smallness of the amp, I think it... You know, maybe it's all in my head, but it, it, it kind of gives a, um, it just gives a different twist, you know, and you're hitting it from a different angle because I think a lot of times, especially with heavy music, you want to come at it with, you know, the greatest in technology and like the, you know, hyper tested this and endorsed by that kind <laughs> of approach, you know, which I'm not knocking that, you know what I mean? But because I'm not really up on that kind of stuff, I guess I'm looking for, you know, I think it's a common thing that people talk about is how, um, you know, you listen to Led Zeppelin and you know that Jimmy Page, like it sounds so big, but he's just using some little amp. Yeah. And you, you know what I mean? And yet he's able to like create these gigantic riffs. So taking that idea, um, you know, I think this cube amp is kind of like really does the job, you know, especially for overdubs and, um, it just has all these really cool sets. I mean, I could play a couple. Should, should yeah, I, should, do it. Like even that's a little delay. It just says a. Sounds like there's like a flanger on that too. Like. I don't even know what this is gonna do, but. Now it's So on the one hand it's kind of like little and sounds like ween or something you know it's a bit like like low um like you know four tracky mm -hmm. I think you know because it's small and because it's um Yeah I guess you know it doesn't co this amp doesn't cost much so I guess you know it can't be the best stuff in it but um but if you are doing the rest of your recording like obviously the drums are recorded amazingly you know the bass is recording amazingly like my rhythm guitars are just like super high fidelity whatever mm -hmm. you know great mic placement ex everything just done like awesomely but then if you take this amp and then just you know like, i don't even know what this next thing's gonna do i'm just like reaching <laughs> like to me that sounds awesome you know that's just like it adds some movement and and also like i'm able to switch through different sounds so quickly that if it doesn't appeal to me from the jump i just you know just did that i'm not even looking at the amp and different stuff is coming up whereas like in my pedal boards you know like it might take a different combination of things and unplugging things unplug i mean i sound just lazy <laughs> but like you know it's it's um it's not like i have any like care about like how i get to a point where i'm happy like i don't care like if it's really hard and takes a long time that's fine if I can just go like this and it sounds good, like I'm good with that too. And this just amp is just fun. So, you know, here, here I am, like, obviously like I described it, like we're recording this record in this like amazing way that we're like lucky to have us, you know, be, you know, have good, have great people working with us, et cetera. And all the experience that we bring to it, you know, having worked in all these different places, uh, you know, on some of these incredible boards and through these incredible microphones and you know all that stuff is like is is real and you know I carry that experience with me um so I can combine that with something kind of like I don't know maybe it's a little bit cheesy or just like lowbrow but I think if you have all that other stuff and you add in something a little bit uh you know 
on that side, I think you come up with with a cool combination of of elements. It's it, it adds a little bit to the to the yeah like the the greater sandwich that is the record or the sound. It, it, the fact that you know this little tangy pickle by itself might not be something you enjoy, but with the burger as a whole, it it becomes a, a complete sandwich. You that is a that's a that's a great comparison. <laughs> I skipped lunch, because... so I guess I'm hungry today. I skipped lunch, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's all about the pickles for me, to be honest. <laughs> My wife will tell you. Uh, the pickle's key. So, yeah, that's kind of like the pickle theory of guitar that I'm, I'm pretty much subscribing to. And, um, you know, I, I just like that, um, you know, because I think there's just, you know, a lot of people are using the same gear and a lot of the gear is is being used because it's awesome. You know what I mean? Because it's... Uh, been, you know, these are the tools of the trade. And if you're lucky enough to like get into position where you're like, have good people working with you, have good equipment, have an experienced team, you're experienced, you know, it behooves you to step out of those, um, conventions, you know, to the measure that you're comfortable with to, um, not only challenge yourself, but to challenge the listener. But, you know, I, I don't don't think it sounds weird or cheap, but in the context of everything, it's like that pickle that just like makes you want to go back. Yeah.